Hey, uh, motherfuckers, I do hope you're well. My name is Sam, and I'm here to talk to you today about a quirky giant in the world of gaming, with a stable of more recognisable characters than you could shake a power glove at. I'm talking Nintendo. But which Nintendo game is the best selling of all time? What's Nintendo got to do with what's going on here? Why does Luigi keep looking at me like that? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So press start to begin and hold down the A button just enough after the second light to get a boost into this race of knowledge. This is 101 Facts About Nintendo. Number one. In case you've been living in an Amish commune your whole life and have only just discovered the internet, first of all, welcome. Second of all, Nintendo is a video game company who, uh, make video games. I can't be bothered to explain what they are though, Amish person. Google, I mean, search it on the big electric window that you're looking at. Number two. In case you were wondering, the word Nintendo translates as leave luck to heaven in Japanese. Possibly. It could also translate to the Temple of Free Hanafuda. I prefer the first one. Number three. Nintendo is one of the big mamas, or dadas, I guess, of the gaming industry, and had a net sales of $4,464,000,000 in 2016. Number four. On the other hand, its total assets stand at a groin wrecking $11,000,000,000. Number five. In fact, Nintendo is so rich it can afford a yearly loss of a quarter of a billion dollars until 2050 before going bankrupt. I declare bankruptcy! Number six. There's over 5,200 people in the Nintendo family working hard on the latest game for you right now, so you better say thank you. Number seven. In fact, Nintendo has sold more than 4.4 billion of their lovely games of theirs. Number 8. On top of that, Nintendo has sold more than 693 million hardware units. Have you sold that many? Nah, didn't think so. Number 9. Nintendo even own a baseball team. Or, well, did own a baseball team. They bought the Seattle Mariners for their very own in 1992. But, unfortunately, they're due to sell most of their shares in August of 2016. Number 10. Way back in the old past, Nintendo was established as Yamauchi Nintendo & Co. in 1933. Number 11. But even way further back than that, in 1889 in Kyoto, Fasajira Yamauchi started making Hanafuda Japanese playing cards, which are lovely cards with flowers on them. Aww. Number 12. In 1902, Yamauchi started making Western-style playing cards with aces and diamonds and stuff, all intended for export. They became very popular in Japan and eventually the rest of the world as well. Number 13. In 1950, Hiroshi Yamauchi became the president of Yamauchi Nintendo and changed the name of the company to the Nintendo Playing Card Company. It started mass manufacturing plastic playing cards in 1953, so you could spill, I don't know, mayonnaise or whatever that liquid is on them and still play. Number 14. Nintendo were even allowed to print Disney characters on their cards due to a nice deal with the Walt Disney Company. Number 15. In 1963, Nintendo seemingly went mental and decided it could branch away from cards and do other things, like the clever clogs they are. Such products included a taxi company, instant rice, and a TV network. Number 16. In 1988, Nintendo sold Nintendo Cereal Systems, which, despite a quite confusing name, was a breakfast cereal. Number 17. They even ran a chain of love hotels, where guests would go to to <clears throat> have their Donkey Kong's barrel rolled, you know, their bros super smashed, or their Princess Peaches uh, warioed. Basically, I, I mean sex. This didn't actually go so well, and many of them were shut down. Number 18. Nintendo then focused on toys such as the Ultra Hand and the Love Tester 
Both of those sound like they were designed to be used in those hotels I just mentioned the fact before, but, but they, they weren't. I, I don't think so, anyway. Number 19! In a twist that I'm sure will shock you, it started manufacturing video games. I know, right? What? As well as cards, and changed its name to Nintendo Company instead. Number 20. T. In 1973, Nintendo developed a laser shooting game, literally called Laser Clay Shooting System. Snappy. Which was played in converted abandoned bowling alleys. Number 21. However, an oil crisis hit Japan in 1973, which made transporting these massive new systems around pretty difficult. This led to many cancelled orders, because of which Nintendo were then in debt by $64 million. Oof. Maybe they should have stuck to cards and sex dungeons. Number 22! In 1976, Nintendo developed a video game system based on this laser clay shooting game with Mitsubishi Electric. Number 23! One game for said console was called Duck <laughs> No, I said Duck Hunt, you dirty-eared pervert. This was a light-based shooting game that projected flying ducks onto a wall that you had to then shoot with a rifle. A fake one, of course, <laughs> otherwise that would cause, you know, irreparable damage to your house and possibly end a human life. This was released in 1976. Number 24. The first Nintendo home consoles were then released in 1977 and were imaginatively called Color TV Game. Number 25. The very first one was called Color TV Game 6. That's confusing, this must have been where Microsoft got their grasp of numbers too. This, as you can see, was essentially Pong, which had been released five years earlier. Number 26. In 1978, Nintendo released Computer Othello, based on the popular board game of the same name and not the uh, Shakespearean play about racists. I'm not too sure that would be very fun as a video game. Number 27. Color TV Racing 112 was released in 1978. The console had a steering wheel and gear stick built into the system, just like a real car does, except without the, you know, big go faster horn button thing. Yeah, I can't drive. Number 28. In 1981, Nintendo released the coin-operated video game Donkey Kong, which was designed to break the North American market. This game features an appearance by a little fat man named Mr. Video, who was later renamed Jumpman and then Mario. Number 29. In the game, Mario had to rescue a damsel in distress named Pauline. I included this because to me it sounds funny for some reason. <laughs> Mario and Pauline sound like a couple who live on top of a laundromat. Number 30. In this game, Mario had to be designed with white gloves and red overalls, not just because it looks bloody fabulous, but also so you could see his arms actually moving within the limited pixels. Number 31. He also had a moustache and a hat to hide the fact his mouth and hair didn't move. Very clever. I'm sure he'll make something of himself yet, that Mario. Number 32. In 1983, Universal sued Nintendo over Donkey Kong, saying it was a copyright infringement on Giant Ape King Kong's brand. Out of this Donkey vs King legal battle of the Kongs, Nintendo was the victor. Number 33. The lawyer who represented Nintendo in this legal fight was called John Kirby. Kirby. Now there's a name I've heard before, but where? Oh, this little guy. The character name for Kirby was chosen out of a selected list of names for his connection to the lawyer. Number 34. Nintendo also got in trouble with Pixar. The game Uni Racers was cancelled after Pixar sued Nintendo because one of their animated shorts featured a red unicycle as the main character, much like the game did. Nintendo had to cease production after only 300,000 copies were actually made. Number 35. In 1983, Nintendo released their Famicom, family computer, in Japan. You may think, hmm, that looks familiar, and let me tell you why. A year later, it was launched in America as the Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES. Number 36. In the 1980s, Nintendo was experimenting with a, uh, knitting machine peripheral for the NES. 
It was even demonstrated at the 1987 Winter Consumer Electronics Show and was subsequently dropped when everybody realised that it's quite a weird and terrible idea. Number 37. In 2007, the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences awarded a belated technological and engineering Emmy Award for their D-pad directional button on the NES. Number 38. The original Super Mario Bros. game on the NES was the best-selling Nintendo game of all time, until 2008, when it was usurped by the gaming titan that was... Wii Sports. Wow, didn't see that coming. Number 39. In the Japanese version of the NES, there was a microphone in the controller. This was put to good use in the Legend of Zelda game, where you could kill enemies by voice command. Number 40. Nintendo also released a peripheral for the NES in 1989 known as the Power Glove. I love the Power Glove. It's so bad. Number 41. Only two games were compatible with the glove, and it tanked more than Brad Pitt and Fury. Only 100,000 power gloves actually sold in the US. The meaning of life! Nintendo actually had a team called the Nintendo Game Counselors, who were hired to guide users through particularly difficult levels on Nintendo games. That's weird, why didn't they just gook it? Oh yeah, right. Number 43. In fact, Legend of Zelda was cited as the game the game counselors got the most calls about. Number 44. They had to cap the calls at seven minutes long to stop callers using the hotline as an actual counseling hotline to talk about, you know, real life problems. Not that they matter. Just bottle it all up and then explode in your mid 40s, that's what I say. Number 45. Nintendo even had a direct to consumer magazine called Nintendo Power which included walkthroughs and printed top scores in certain games. Number 46. Nintendo sure were a productive bunch because five years after the NES in Japan, the Game Boy, the world's first portable handheld game system, was introduced. Number 47. The Game Boy screen had a swanky four different shades of grey, inspiring the novel Fifty Shades of Grey. I mean, I have no evidence of that whatsoever, but hey, that, that could be true. Number 48. In 2000, the Nintendo Game Boy became the most popular selling console ever, with sales passing 100 million. This would later be beaten by PlayStation 2, but shh, let it have its moment. Number 49. Gunpei Yokoi is credited with the design and the invention of the Game Boy. He was initially hired as an electrician, but he was promoted once Hiroshi noticed Gunpei's toy extendable hand, the ultra hand I mentioned earlier, that he had built and invented. He ordered over a million units. I don't know what you used them for, but he ordered them. Number 50? The Nintendo Game Boy was even the first ever video game console to be played outside of Earth. Russian cosmonaut A.A. Serebrov played Tetris on it while in orbit. Maybe he, I don't know, mistook it for an important bit of technology or something. Number 51. Speaking of Tetris, co-founder of Apple Steve Wozniak was so good at Tetris, he eventually was banned from Nintendo Power magazine, because the editors got bored with printing his name every month. Hey, don't hate the player, Nintendo. Hate the game, yeah? Number 52. That said, he did submit one last high score as Yvette Kane Zhao. That Steve wasn't the act backwards, by the way. Number 53. In 2015, a company managed to build a completely new game called Star Versus for the Nintendo Entertainment System that was built in 1983. In a similar vein, I released a documentary about myself on Betamax last year. Number 54. In 1991, Nintendo released their brand spanking new 16-bit console, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, or the SNES. This was one year after the birth of my precious Jennifer Lawrence. Just... just saying. Number 55. In South Korea, the SNES is known as the Super Convoy, and it was distributed by Hyundai Electronics and not Nintendo. Number 56. In the 1990s, Nintendo was experimenting with playing the lottery through a special modem for the Super NES system, which was effectively bringing gambling into the family home. 
Number 57. Politicians, those squares, shut down the project after concerns that gambling would be closely connected to a device that children used so much. Number 58. A few pornographic games were made without Nintendo's permission, with such titles as Bubble Bath Babes and Hot Slots. Nope, I said slots. Also, I swear I've seen those movies before. Number 59. For Mortal Kombat on the SNES, Nintendo censored the violence in the game, making the blood a grey colour instead of usual red, to make it more suitable for children. It's even suitable for kids up until this de- Oh, oh, oh. Nintendo 60. In 1996, the Nintendo 64 was launched in Japan. It sold more than half a million units in its first day. Nintendo 61. The Nintendo 64 could have been called some other pretty fly names, such as Project Reality or Ultra 64. Nintendo love the word Ultra, don't they? Nintendo 62. The 64 was named after its central processing unit, which was 64 bits. The Xbox One was probably named for similar reasons. Nintendo 63. The N64 logo has 64 sides to it. The more you know. Nintendo 64. <laughs> hey! The Miis, these smug little gits who live on the Wii, were originally considered for the Nintendo 64. Nintendo 65. In fact, the Miis could have been used even way back further than that on the SNES. Shigeru Miyamoto liked the idea of a game where you could draw and build characters who could then appear in other games, but apparently nobody else liked it, sadly. These were the hashtag inspiration for the Miis. Nintendo 66 When the N64 was released, there were only two games you could actually play on the bloody thing, Mario 64 and Pilotwings 64. Nintendo 67 the Nintendo 64 was the last video game console to ever use cartridges. The last cartridge ever made was for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater in 2002. Nintendo 68 The weird analogue stick in the middle was actually the first time a stick like this appeared in all the video game history. It wasn't all good news though. Nintendo 69 for Mini Game Fest and Relationship Destroyer Game Mario Party, the analog stick was used a lot, specifically for use on the palm of the player's hands. Speaking as somebody who has done this before, this was f***ing painful. So painful, in fact, Nintendo were actually sued for it. Number 70! Subsequently, Nintendo had to provide gloves with every copy of the game upon request. The ridiculous amount of orders for these gloves cost Nintendo 80 million dollars. Number 71. The Game Boy Color was introduced in 1998, along with the Game Boy Printer and Game Boy Camera, the combination of which would haunt your nightmares for many, many years after its release. <laughs> Number 72. Next in 2001, the GameCube was born into the world. Despite the name, it's not actually a cube at all. <laughs> now I'm going to sue Nintendo for false advertising. Number 73. While in development, it was codenamed the Dolphin. This is actually referenced in some of the games, including Super Mario Sunshine, which contains an Aldafino, which is Dolphin in Italian. Oh, he's the best man! Early prototypes of the GameCube actually had motion controlled controllers. These were scrapped. I mean, motion controlled controllers, that would never catch on. Number 75. If you lined up all the GameCubes sold worldwide, you'd have too much time in your hands, but also it would stretch for about 2,165 and a half miles. Number 76. 21.7 million GameCubes were sold worldwide. Number 77. Out of the top 25 best-selling games for GameCube, 19 were made by Nintendo themselves. Super Smash Bros. Melee was the top seller with 7 million copies. Number 78. Super Smash Bros. is an extremely popular Nintendo fighting franchise, and it has some pretty hardcore fans. One fan named Aura Chandler Chris wrote a fan fiction based on the Brawl edition that is 4 million words long. 
Number 79. The game was originally called Dragon King The Fighting Game and featured no Nintendo characters whatsoever. The developers decided to include them to make the game more unique and to make it easier to keep track of just who the hell you actually are, because with these guys I wouldn't be able to tell. Number 80. After the success of Super Smash Bros, Nintendo put out a poll in Japan about which characters players would like to see on the roster next. One character on the list is the world's favourite serial killer, womanizer, and quip generator. Yes, that's right, James Bond from GoldenEye. Number 81, yeah. The Wii motion control technology was invented and developed by a man named Tom Quinn. Number 82. This technology was initially pitched to both Microsoft and Sony before Nintendo. Both of them said thanks, but no thanks. Or at least I hope they did, because you know, that's polite. Number 83. Apparently, when pitching to Nintendo, a heated debate started, but they eventually accepted the offer in September of 2001, same month as when the GameCube was officially launched. Number 84. The Wii controller was initially called a gyropod, which is also my porn name. <laughs> I can't leave that in. Number 85. The gyropod was based on the GameCube controller, but was simplified down to the basic remote or Wiimote and nunchuck add-on. Man, I wish that was a real nunchuck. I should sue them again. Number 86. Nintendo was sued, oh, quel surprise, by Philips, Triton and IA Labs over the motion control technology patents. Philips was successful and Nintendo settled down with them. Ah, oh, oh, not like that. Number 87. Nintendo CEO Totoru Iwata told Wii developers that the console shouldn't be thicker than two DVD cases to make it sexy and discreet and mobile and sexy. I may have added those sexies in. Number 88. Ooh. Partially because of these design constraints, the Wii is only twice as powerful as the GameCube. So there's a lesson for you. Sexy can come at a price. Number 89. Just after Wii Sports, which sold a whopping 82 million copies, Mario Kart Wii was the most popular Wii game. Number 90. Wii Fit also did tremendously bloody well. Well done, Wii Fit. The Wii Fit's been used for a lot of good in the world, actually, including children's physiotherapy and even for gentle exercise at elderly folks' homes. Number 91. The blue light on the front of the Wii flashes every time a console owner receives a message. The flash is meant to mimic the rhythm of the Japanese bush warbler's song, which is a bird by the way, and is also the most weirdly specific easter egg ever. Number 92! In 2011, Nintendo f***ed people right in the eye and released the Nintendo 3DS, a glassesless 3D evolution of the pre-existing DS console. Number 93! It was initially considered a failure and drained lots of dosh, so Nintendo execs took hefty pay cuts in order to salvage profits. Number 94. Nintendo also offered 10 free Nintendo games and 10 free Game Boy Advance games to anybody who bought a 3DS at its launch. Oh, love me. Pathetic. Number 95. By the end of 2015, almost 58 million units had been sold worldwide. That's not that bad, right? Number 96. The Nintendo Wii U and the Nintendo 3DS XL were both launched in the year of the supposed apocalypse 2012. Coincidence? Yeah, probably. Number 97. Producer of the Legend of Zelda series, A.G. Enuma, admitted that the Wii U gamepad, which looks like a gadget from an 80s sci-fi movie, was flawed and interrupted the user's gameplay. Number 98. During the first three years of the Wii U, it only sold 9.2 million units. It's considered the worst selling Nintendo console ever. <laughs> I bet, <laughs> I bet Nintendo were asking people, uh, please, please Wii U buy a console. <laughs> Sorry. Number 99. The best selling Wii U game was Guess what? Mario Kart 8. 
Number 100! Number 100! Number 100! In Mario Kart 8, when passing Luigi, Luigi will give you a glare more bitchy than your ex shorty seeing you in the local cafe with Yo New Lady. This has since become a popular meme and was even nominated for Best Gaming Moment at the Joystick Awards. Number 101! This is the ad for the original Super Smash Bros. It's amazing. You're welcome. That was 101 Facts About Nintendo, and I don't know about you, but I had a lovely time. I really did. What a lovely video we all experienced together. <gasps> if you want more 101 Facts videos, like Yoshi just wants to be recognised as the love of Toad's life, yep, there's a subtext you didn't know existed, then click on subscribe right now and you will get exactly that. Here do we go! It's like Mario. It's good, that, isn't it? That t-shirt.